Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. <laughs> He took an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States of America. By some, he's been called controversial. I'll keep my freedom, I'll keep my guns, try to keep my money and my religion too. Now, now keep in mind that some of my guests have been approached by oh, Homeland Security or FBI saying, oh, uh, why are you going on the Clay Douglas show? My message to those guys that are listening this morning is go get a cup of coffee, maybe you'll learn something. We both took the same oath, you know, to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I don't recall there being an expiration date on that. I'm going to keep my big B.A. Keep my friends the same. Keep the government out of my business and y'all can keep the change. This he is the free American, Clay Douglas. We know what we need. We know who to blame. Catch the Free American Hour weekdays at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. I'll keep the U.S.A. For the podcast and more details, visit www.freeamerican.com or catch the podcast by phone by calling 832-999-8621. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, Clay Douglas. My guest today is Dr. True Ott, another talk show host, a man that puts out a lot of great information, and a man who, uh, like almost all of us that are trying to get the truth out to the American people, are under attack, under attack from people we thought were our friends. My God, what's going on, True? Hello. Well, hello. Uh, thanks, Clay, for having me on again. Yeah, you know, it's just uh, to me, it's part of the course. Uh, you know, as a as a Christian, you really under have to understand that uh, if you if you're on track, like just like Christ was, you you know, you're going to be attacked by uh, a certain tribe that is anti-Christ. Okay, so. It's like oil and water. Sometimes it just doesn't mix, and that's you know, just just to be expected. If you're sitting home, not doing nothing, just minding your p's and q's, being part of the mindless rabble, well, there's not going to be any tax going on. So it's let's just leave your I, life. I, I I just I just want to stay below the radar. I I just don't want to call attention to myself. I I, I just don't want to go to the camps. I mean, that's what we got. Uh, it, 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 their, their whole strategy, well, they have two strategies. Divide and conquer being the main one. Be afraid of everybody uh, else except us. And, and, and the other is, uh, well, they own, they own the media, and, and they go after anybody. Now, if you think about it, where Christians have been, have been prosecuted, persecuted for 2,000 years, the Bible is a whole history uh, of tyranny, and the same thing has happened to us now. 60 million white Christian Russians were were starved to death, murdered, put in gulags, and killed. Isn't that? And, and what I, you know, the reason I do the show is because I believe that is happening here, and it's the same people that are controlling the media, that are controlling, and and they infiltrate every movement. And Lynn Horowitz has certainly been a big infiltrator of the uh, Patriot movement, and attacked me years ago when uh, when I I published a story in the Free American called uh, "Do Jews Run the World and Is It Hate to Ask That Question?" Right now, what yeah, what is happening? With, tell tell us what is happening with you. You've been doing this radio show for a long time. You're, you're, you're into naturopathic medicine, which, of course, will make you a target for the uh, pharmaceutical companies. 
Well, you know, um, I just try, try to ignore the barking dogs out there because that's what, the, really, that's what they want. Clay, I submit that they just want you to get angry. They want you to be fear-based. They want you to be hostile because that takes takes you away from the message. When when I uh, oh golly, it's been about two years ago now. When I, you know, to me, I'm a pragmatist. I try to focus on the problem. You know, as a scientist, and I, and I use that term kind of loosely, okay, but I, I follow the scientific model. You know, you try and figure out what the problem is, whether it's in the laboratory or if somebody is uh, ill, what's really causing that disease, okay? That's, that's what naturopathy is. Naturopathy is is just going back to the, and discovering the root cause of any problem, okay? Now, let me, let me just... Uh, <laughs> Just digress a little bit into my history. In 1987, I I got very very sick, uh, very ill. I had a strange uh, problem. It's called uh, uh, hypokalemia. It just means means very low in potassium. My minerals are so out of balance. Now I, I had no idea the role of minerals in body's in the body's health and, and wellness. So you know, and, and neither does uh, the, the allopathic. Neither did or do. The allopathic community, the, the, the typical white doc, white coat doctors, right? So I had to, I had to go outside the box and learn about the human body on my own, and that led me to uh, a, a, deg a degree program, a course of study outside the United States. Now, this is a, this is a multifaceted problem, Clay, and you can understand where I'm coming from here. You know, not only did you say as you in your own intro that the this uh, certain tribe that controls the media, they also control the higher education cycle. It's called, if you really go deep, it's called, called the Board of Regents. It gives a so-called accreditation to higher education, whether it's master's or PhD, but primarily doctoral programs in major universities. You have to get all this approved by the Board of Regents. Now, who controls the Board of Regents? What is the even term Board of Regents, right? And look, go, go, go deep into that rabbit hole. You find it's really part of the Masons. You find that even above that, it's a little little uh, head Masonic group called the B'nai B'rith, which is the Jewish arm, so-called Jew. I don't, like, I don't like to use the word Jewish. I just say it's Edomite, okay? Because that's really truly what it is. comes back into this whole cycle, they control the the mindset of people in the universities that, that do the studies, do the research, do the, they get all this grant money coming from, in from the, the banking cartels. This is the whole system. Now, I didn't understand this back in 87, 88, and 89, but in 1990, when I got approved for this doctorate course out of Dresden, Germany, they were very really upfront that says, and you in America, it's not recognized or accredited by this special group of the Nigris regents, right? So do you so do you want to pay upwards of fifteen grand for tuition for something that's not accredited? They were honest and upfront about it, and my my mentors in this whole project said, well, it's the information, it's the knowledge. It's the wisdom that ultimately matters, is it not? If you've got to step outside the so-called box. You've got to step outside the, the mind prison in the first place. Because they said, look, the allopathic, you know, cuts and uh, medicates via chemical system is broken. It's not going to work long term. And you cannot solve a problem by doing the same thing all all over and over again. It takes another outside look, another way, you know, outside the box thinking. So this is what, uh, what I went through. And in the early 90s, after I completed this doctorate course, I had a whole new paradigm, really, on who runs the world. And the, the, the world, I'm talking the entire globe, you know, is, uh, is, is permeated by the cancer of greed, a cancer of hate, a, a tribe, a certain specific tribe. So, 
two years ago when I came to a full understanding of, you know, the whole cursing, okay, of this tribe, which is Esau from Eden, which is Edom, E-D-O-M, then I realized, wow, this is really the answer. You've got to expose it. You've got to, you know, real, first of all, you got to let the Christian Anglo people know who they really truly are, that they are Israel, and the others are Edom, and that's a war of annihilation. It ultimately is that. And so you have to be, uh, be aware and knowledgeable before any changes community. Now, when I began to come out with that information is when I became attacked by a certain group of people. Uh, specifically, Dr. Len Horowitz emailed me, that, and he basically was very cryptic. I, I still keep the email for, for evidence. He said, quote, I quote, how stupid of you to expose yourself as a, quote, Jew-hating man. Excuse me, I never talked about hating Jews. I, I'm starting to expose them as Edomites. Well, that's, that? that's that's what he did to me. He sent me. He called me up and and was screaming at me. I was on short wave. I was I was selling his book. I, he was he was one of my authors. I was selling his book. I bought the the books from him and sold. And uh, it's why why would you run that story without checking with me? I said, when have I ever checked with you for anything I publish? And then when I saw him in uh, in San Jose at the conspiracy con, he was screaming obscenities at me in front of my son for me running the story. You 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 sent my letter. Uh, you sent that letter I sent you to uh, John Trogman. I said I sent it to everybody. You fool! I put it in the magazine. It's in this issue right here. He attacked me. He didn't attack anything that the writer of the article said all he did was attack me for publishing it and finally I said uh, you know I said you're disappointed in me I'm disappointed in you man for trying to control what I publish you know nobody can do that right screw you he screams at the top of his lungs well yeah see and, and let me be very clear to our listeners Clay when you talk about uh, the Edomites, you know, you're not talking about a religion here. You're talking about a specific bloodline, just like uh, you might talk about Caucasian or Asian, Eastern Asian, Indian, etc. They're, they're just genetic bloodlines, and they're, they're quite easily identifiable. They, they have a specific racial profile, okay? And, it's, and it shouldn't be hate speech just to identify races. It's like when you fill out a job application, you got to mark Caucasian or African American. It's not racist to identify a tribe or a bloodline. It shouldn't be anyway, but it surely is to use the term Edomite. That I found out very quickly. They hate that term. It just flat out throws them into an attack mode. And again, the reason why that is is because they have been engaged in a massive deception for centuries, many, many centuries, to hide the fact that they are the cursed race of Edom. Now, you know, if, if you were cursed, you wouldn't want to have that come out either, would you, Clay? So, yeah, uh, this is their Achilles heel, ladies and gentlemen, and please understand that, that when you talk about the term Jew, you're talking about more than anything else, a religious structure called Judaism, and, and it's just not true that all Jews are problematic. It's just not. You know, you 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 have now. There's a there's a book that I reviewed on my radio show yesterday that is incredible. It's, uh, I don't have my notes in front of me, and I so I apologize. It was a Canadian rabbi who came out with this in 1988. He was exposing. The, what he termed as, you know, the cancer inside of Judaism, which is the so-called Sabbatean slash Frankite cult. Now, Sabbatai Zvi was a very, very problematic rabbi in the 17th century, born in 1626, and he lived for just only 50 years, but during his lifetime he declared himself to be the promised Messiah. 
he basically turned uh, uh, half of Jewry uh, on its ear because he basically said, look, the law of Moses, the Torah, the Ten Commandments, it's no longer valid. It's now do as thou wilt. You know, and he, and he, and he, and he preached that uh, uh, robbery and adultery and pedophilia, uh, murder for hire, all of these things were virtues, not sins. He just basically reversed in 180 degrees the, you know, the Torah law. And this rabbi in Kent, Canada said that uh, by his estimation, over 50% of Judaism, of Jewry, had you know had succumbed to this insanity. So yeah, half is just a lot, a lot of, of them do. And and specifically in my research, you see the tribe of you know, the family line of the Rothschilds and others, exclusively the Ashkenazi Khazar groups, embracing this completely. You see the the budding, if you will, of uh, Sabbatai uh, Judaism uh, blossoming in America in the form of these organized crime mafioso groups. The Jewish mafia is is organized crime. Okay, the syndicate is Jewish. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Lansky never went to jail, and he ran Al Capone's whole operation. He did. In fact, if you see what happened in 1932, uh, during the middle, you know, the height of the Great Depression, when people were thrown out of work, you see Meyer, Meyer Lansky uh, organizing all of the Jewish gangs, and, you know, specifically the Purple Gang in Detroit. You see them actually meeting at a uh, Porsche Hotel in New York, uh, along with uh, Meyer Lansky was his. Uh, the, the Sicilian mafia, so uh, Lucky Luciano, they all basically formed a super syndicate in 1932. And you you see this connected uh, by the Jewish money power, which is the House of Rothschild, the Rockefeller, which Rockefeller is a crypto uh, Jew. He, he claims to be Christian, but absolutely bloodline is Edomite, okay? So you see all of this going into play in in uh, New York City. The tentacles of this octopus goes, of course, to control Chicago, Los Angeles, uh, Miami. The you know the whole Florida syndicate is controlled by this family. Uh, and now, <laughs> let me let me just stop you for just a second. You know, people have asked me. Well, is is, is Lerton Horowitz right? Is Irwin Schiff right? Is Boston Tea Party right? Is the IRS? Yeah, the IRS is uh, has. There's no law that authorizes them to do this. It's an illegal operation. It's a criminal operation. It's an extortion racket. But it's a, you know, when you become aware of that, it's a little like going up to Al Capone and going, Hey, Al, I, I found out extortion is not uh, legal, and I'm not paying you no more. And Al sends his boys around to break your kneecaps. And you 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 get in line, or or you you join Jimmy Hoffa, right? Well, that's really what what I'm what I'm getting at. Yeah, from from the ni 1930s onward, you see this this tribe of of organized syndicates. And so when we talk about the term banksters, bankers and gangsters, I mean it's it's absolutely a correct term. Uh, you've got the syndicate of of Meyer Lansky. Operating behind the scenes, yeah. You look at look at who runs the Internal Revenue Service, which is a collection agency for the big banksters. All the IRS is for is to collect the interest on their usury, their money lent to the government to operate as our dollars, the Federal Reserve. It's not just coincidence that the Federal Reserve in 1913 was formed and the IRS was formed the same year. You got to understand how they are interrelated and. And so you see the the machinations, uh, the funding of huge amounts of money during the 1930s from this syndicate in New York, uh, all through the House of Rothschild banks in France and in England. And we see something really strange happening. We see the Third Reich of Germany being built from the ashes of post World War One Germany and Austria. You know, people have got to really understand 
that in the during the 20s, the so-called Roaring Twenties in America, it was the ultimate depression 20s in Germany. There was hyperinflation, was rampant. Uh, the average person was was really struggling to even put bread on the table during that era. And yet we see the decade later, the 1930s, we see the somehow the influx of major funds into the industrial centers of Germany through IG Farben and others, that we see this massive war machine of the Third Reich and Adolf Hitler coming into power. And so that this is what this uh, Canadian rabbi showed us, is this this cult of sabotage by and Frankites extending into the very heart of Germany. We see, you know, he makes a, the very bold declaration there. And again, it's great when a Jew uh, makes these declarations themselves. You know, the, the Gentiles don't have to worry about it. I just have to quote the Jews. That say that he makes the, the, the declaration that Adolf Hitler, Heinrich Himmler, Goebbels, and others were sabotaged by Jews, crypto Jews, hiding behind the Roman Catholic. Um, there. And that's, again, what this all comes to be. Roman Catholicism, the, the cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope today, Pope Benedict, a.k.a. Cardinal Ratzinger, these are all Edomite bloodlines as well as the synagogue rabbis that sabotage why. You have to understand the connection or it all doesn't make sense. So the the, 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 these Edomites have their hands into the banking, into the media, into the government. At one time during the during the Cold War, the the FBI was told that uh, they had the, the communists had infiltrated the State Department so much uh, to the extent that uh, basically the KGB and the FBI were the same organization, or, or the CIA and the Mossad, like just like the CIA and the Mossad work hand in hand in the drug business. They run all the drugs in this country, sell them to you, and then put you in prison so you can uh, we can uh, be you can be legal slave labor. Is is that? Do I have an accurate view on that? Well, yeah. See, the, the you, you use the word communism. Yeah. Who's the author of communism? Karl Mordecai, who changed his name to Karl Marx. You know, that's the Communist Manifesto. Communism, the, the color of communism is what? Blue? Orange? Communism is synonymous with red. Red communism, the red star, the red pentacles, is the symbol of worldwide communism. It's the, the color is red. The term Edom, See, Esau, when he uh, sold his birthright for red pottage, first of all, the Bible tells us that Esau came out of the womb red, red and hairy. And he comes out of the womb red, and, and after, as he loses his birthright, he's renamed, he's given a new name, which in Hebrew is Edom. Hebrew, the Hebrew word Edom literally means red. So out of that, you know, everything that, that he has, has uh, used his descendants over the centuries, over the millennia, is such is tied to the color red. Red equals Edom equals Edomite. So and, let's see, we've go got we've got red China, right? I mean, uh, we're buying all of our goods from China, and it's communist controlled, which means it's controlled by the uh, yeah, same people, yeah. right? Well, yeah, see, this, it's not the Oriental race that's red Edomite, but I'm here to tell you that you know when when Mao when Mao came to power, the funding and the negotiations behind the power, the money behind Mao and the Communist Party of China is these red Edomite banksters. And and, and I, he I, was chosen. He was chosen over Chiang Kai-shek. We betrayed Chiang Kai-shek, who was trying to who ended up uh, creating Taiwan. Is that correct? That's right. It's, again, it, it, if, you, if you really follow the trail, as I have done, you see that every, every time a country uh, embraces communism, you see these Edomite manipulators. Whether they are uh, of the synagogues of the so-called Judah, Judahites, 
or whether they're the Jesuit order. They're the same people bloodline-wise. Edom is Roman Catholicism, and it is also the synagogues of the Judaites. Now, that doesn't mean that all Jews are are subscribing to that or are of that bloodline either. Okay, you've got to be very clear to understand that. That uh, again, some some uh, Jews are just there again for religion. There are there are people that have converted uh, from the true Israel. I mean, Israelites have somehow embraced uh, Judaism, and so it's uh, again there's a there's a Sephardic line as well, Sephardi Jews, which are totally different than the a Khazar Ashkenazi Edom section as well. So, you know, it's 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 a system that's being used, if you will, by this tribe of Edomites, uh, both both the, the uh, Christian side as well as the side of Judaism. Uh, you just can't was, make one blanket uh, character characterization here. It was, uh, you know, I what I have tried to tell people over the last twenty years. I've been doing this over twenty years. I've tried to tell people that uh, the the elite, the Khazars, the 33rd degree Masons, they hide behind the Jewish people. They use the Jewish people as cover, and they use the Jewish people in their work because their religion. They are trained to to that money's God. Their God's gold, oil, and uh, diamonds, isn't it? Or drugs? Gold, oil, and drugs. I would say. And, and yes, sir. yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, the 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 book that I would, again was referring to. I I, I apologize for the now naming the author. I don't have my notes here. Uh, the book uh, also goes on to explain, you know, the the swastika symbol again, going back to to baptize by the sun god is basically the author of the Frankite sabotage by cult. And so he makes a strong, he makes a very strong case, showing that a good, you know, there were over 150,000 top officers of Adolf Hitler, 150,000 throughout the the German army that were Jews. This is an amazing revelation that he proves it. And the top SS troops were Jews. Now. The question that he asks, he says, why would such thing be, you know, it, it, it sounds absolutely insane and ludicrous given, you know, the Holocaust and the, the claims of the Edomites today about the six million lost. But what he points out is that this was, you know, it, an act of vengeance. The Sabbatian cult said and promised in the 1600s and the 1700s under Jacob Frank that they would eventually annihilate those who would uh, oppose them within their ranks of Judaism. So you see the, 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 I don't know exactly how many Jews were killed in the concentration camps. I know it wasn't six million. I'm not denying the Holocaust here. I'm just saying that there was a, there was probably more like uh, four or five hundred thousand. And that's pushing it according to this rabbi figures. As well, but there's uh, you know, even if there's 150 or 200,000, that's still a terrible loss of life. And it was these uh, these Jews that were that were that were liquidated in these camps were those that were rabidly anti-Zionist. They were the leading rabbis that were 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 protesting strongly the the whole Zionist movement during the 1800s and early 1900s. And so that makes complete total sense to me. The uh, yeah, the the I was told that the Russians and uh, that survived the death camps in uh, in Russia, and you know far more white Christians uh, died in Russia than uh, Jews in Germany. 